BTEC Applied Science help. Uh, we've got Unit 1 exams coming up. Now is the time to get revising. Let's get revising. Okay, let's get ready for these exams. Now is the time. Uh, in this video, what will the exam be like? If you don't know, in fact, if you don't know now, you've got big problems. What exactly do you need to know for the Unit 1 exams? Uh, where can you find out what you need to know? Uh, and what's the best way to revise some revision tips? I'll do another video on exam tips once you're actually in the exam. What's the best way to approach it? But anyway, let's get gnashing. So you should know that there are three 30 minute papers. Uh, it used to be one 90 minute exam, but they split it up. And normally what happens now is you get the, the chemistry uh, and the biology one day, uh, two different exams, and then you get the physics the day after. So there's three 30 minute exams. Uh, each one is some short answers, which are like one to four marks. Um, sometimes the short answers are multi-choice, but not always. Uh, so some short answer questions, uh, and then a long answer question uh, worth six marks, loads and loads of marks. You have to give lots of detail in your answer. I'll talk about tackling the six mark question in the next video, as I said. Uh, now, get hold of as many past papers as you can. Uh, hopefully your teacher will have given you a few. Uh, you'll have done a few like practice tests and things. Hang on to these papers. They are gold dust. OK, what you can do is Google. If you just Google uh, Pearson BTEC, uh, BTEC Nationals Applied Science uh, 2016, because that's when this specification started. OK, and past papers. BTEC Applied Science Unit 1 past papers and you'll find loads of past papers and mark schemes. Download them, put them in a folder in your user area, yeah, or at home on your computer. Get hold of as many past papers as you can. Now, what do you need to know? Well, uh, what you can do is get hold of the specification. The specification says exactly what you need to know. This is what your teacher uses to teach you uh, and you can just download your own on the same website as you got the past papers specification uh, and at my place we do the uh, this one here so level three it's level three and we do the extended certificate is what we do it doesn't matter because unit one is the same for all of them it's for certificate and extended certificate and diploma they all do the same unit one it's unit one we're looking at and you can get hold of this specification and then you find unit one yes unit one in the specification and then what we are interested is in this essential content that is exactly what you need to know yeah if you print it off you can use it as a checklist they cannot ask you anything which isn't there. I mean, obviously, it doesn't explain anything. You know, it doesn't explain what the Aufbau principle is. But that tells you exactly what you need to know. And if it's not there, you don't need to know it. Some other things you should consider having. Now, there are three books. The first book, this one here, is like a textbook. Uh, and there's tons and tons and tons of information in it explaining everything and some examples and whatever. I think the one that you must have, the must have one is this, which is the revision guide, which is a it's a bit like the textbook, but it's a little bit more condensed. Yeah, there is less stuff in it. There's not as much stuff in it, but there's all of the important stuff. So that one there, I 100 percent recommend if you go on eBay you'll probably get hold of a copy of that for like less than a fiver because there's lots of students who have finished with them and they just want to make a couple of quid getting rid of them. OK, so very good quality ones. They won't be that tatty, but make sure you get yourself that one, the revision guide. 
Uh, this one here is not bad either. That one's okay if you fancy doing a few more questions and things, this revision workbook. But make sure you must have this one here. Okay, there's tons and tons of information in this one. I think possibly too much information. Uh, at this time, you want the, the bare bones, the skeleton, the stuff that you really, really need to learn, that one in the middle. Now, in terms of revision, the number one golden rule, what you must do is plan your revision. Do I need to say it 10 times? It is so important. Plan your revision. If you don't plan your revision, if you sit down and think, oh, what should I do now? Hmm, I'll do a bit of that then. Rubbish. Plan your revision. Know when you are going to revise and what you are going to revise. Okay? And you do that so that you make sure you cover everything. You cover absolutely everything. All of the biology, all of the chemistry, all of the physics. If you want it broken down into little chunks, then look at my videos. If you look here, so the biology, there's three main sections. And then on each section, I've done a certain number of videos. So that basically means with the biology, there's 15 things, 15 topics. With the chemistry, there's 18. With the physics, there's 13. And that's how you could break it down in terms of what am I going to do on Tuesday evening? I'm going to do uh, three biology topics, like one of the easier ones and a couple of the more tricky ones, uh, and maybe a physics topic. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to do this, etc., etc. Every week, uh, do a revision timetable. I've always told my students to do this when I was a student. Uh, I always did a revision table on a Sunday evening. Yes, plan it out. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. At uh, what times I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Yes, uh, make sure you revise everything. Know when you are going to revise and what you are going to revise. And keep a record of what you have and haven't revised so that you do cover everything. Now, good revision and bad revision. Good revision, processing information and testing yourself. Processing information, doing stuff with the information. The, I think the worst revision you can do, oh, I, I read through my notes. Uh, I sat in the living room and I, I read the revision guide. I read that chapter. Uh, I watched uh, one of Dave's videos. You know, I sat on my bum and watched a couple of videos. This is rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. Good revision is doing stuff with the information. Reading through your revision guide and taking notes. Make a highlight, write down on a bit of paper the important things. Yeah, watch my videos and take notes. Have a go at the examples in the videos. Yeah, don't just watch it, do stuff processing information and testing yourself that's good revision anything else is rubbish you're wasting your time so get hold of as many past papers as you can along with the mark schemes uh, do them do the questions uh, make a list of the topics that you don't know as well as you should so if you've had a go at a question on standing waves and you didn't have a clue, make a little note to do standing waves. You need to revise that. You need to get your head around it. You may have the opportunity to actually, you know, ask your teacher, uh, excuse me, hey, Dave, could you maybe spend 10 minutes going over standing waves? I really don't understand it. If you do that, they will be delighted to help you. Yes, they want to help students who want to learn. If you ask your teacher for help, uh, they won't, oh God, it's that idiot again. No, they'll say, oh, brilliant. They'll be very, very happy to help you. Making flashcards. I've done a whole video about flashcards. I think they're brilliant revision. As I said, watch a video and take notes. Don't just watch the video. Read a chapter and take notes. Write down the important bits. 
uh, do lists of information, stuff that you need to learn, yeah, and then stick them to the wall. When I had exams, my wall was covered in bits of paper. And then the idea is you can just like look at these bits of paper and go through them. Yeah, I know that. And yeah, ooh, I'm not sure. Oh, I need to learn that. Yeah, I know that. I know ooh, I need to learn that. And having done that half a dozen times, you'd be amazed how much stuff sticks in your head. So lists of information, diagrams, graphs that you need to know, bits of paper, stick it to the wall. Make a PowerPoint of all the questions that come up on a particular topic. As in, you know, just do print screen and then paste it into a PowerPoint and then do that for, for example, all the questions that have come up on cells. Yes, and print screen them, put them in a PowerPoint, and then you're processing the information and you can go through the PowerPoint and check that any of these questions that come up, you'll probably smash them. Okay, so that's another thing that you can do, processing information, yeah, rearranging information, doing something with it, and then testing yourself. A few more tips. Uh, some of these are obvious, some of them aren't. Leave your phone downstairs. Yeah, if you're, if you're revising upstairs, leave your phone downstairs. Basically, no distractions. Okay, you know, you, your mates are texting you, asking you if you want to go to the cinema and see Barbie or some rubbish. No, I'm working tonight. And you shouldn't have to tell them because you've left your phone downstairs. You'll survive without your phone for a couple of hours. Honest. Yes. Uh, I reckon two hour sessions are good. Yeah. A two hour session with a, a, a big break. A big break. I mean, like 10 minutes in the middle. Uh, and then maybe in the middle of each hour, you know, get up and go to the loo or go downstairs and thump your little brother. Whatever. OK, two hour sessions with a few little breaks uh, and a decent break in the middle is good. Don't work solidly for two hours because your brain, honestly, your brain can't handle that. Uh, if you've got free time in college, if you've got a free period, if the bus doesn't come for another hour, what do you do? Do you sit in the common room and have a chat with your mates? <coughs> Excuse me. No, get in the study room, get some studying done for an hour. Uh, don't work after nine o'clock. I, I, you know, controversial people might not agree with me. Tough. Don't work after nine o'clock. If you work after nine o'clock, you don't sleep very well. After nine o'clock, go down and watch some rubbish on the telly. Listen to some music. Uh, do a bit of social media. Yes. Don't work after nine o'clock. You won't sleep very well. Uh, make sure that you work at a desk or at a table. Uh, when I was 15, 16, I didn't have my own desk. I used to work at the kitchen table. OK, people left me alone uh, and I used to get my stuff done at the kitchen table and I got loads of work done. Be healthy. OK, look after yourself. Do a bit of exercise. Go for a long walk. Be healthy. Uh, lay off the booze for a, a, a month or so. Uh, be organised. OK. I said, know what you're going to do, when you're going to do it. Have all your physics notes together in one place, all your chemistry notes together in one place, uh, topic by topic, everything nice and organized. A pile of paper that you can scribble on, uh, your lovely computer, everything in folders, not just covering your desktop all over the place. Be organized and also reward yourself. Yes, if you've done two hours of massive revision, reward yourself. What, what might that be? You know, go to the pictures on Wednesday night. Uh, go to the football Saturday afternoon. Uh, buy yourself a, a bar of chocolate, if that's what you're into. Reward yourself. Make it a reward for your hard work. Get into the habit of working OK, you'd be amazed once you actually get into the habit of working, you start enjoying it. You w once you feel as though, you know, more and more and more, your confidence builds. You actually this is a crazy idea. You start looking forward to the exam because you, you want to show off how much that, you know. 
okay get into the habit of working and be self-motivated yeah you're doing this for yourself you're not doing it for your parents you're not doing it for your teacher you are doing it for yourself you're the person who's going to get a decent place at university you're the person who's going to get a good job out of this you're doing it for yourself be self-motivated kick your own bum yeah get upstairs now take responsibility for how well you do if you do well there's one person to thank and that's you if you do rubbish there's one person to blame guess who and it's not your teacher it's not your mates who were ringing you up at 11 o'clock at night it's not your parents probably it's one person and that's you take responsibility for how well you do remember every hour you spend revising it's it's money in the bank it's you are investing in your future look at it that way every hour you spend revising is an investment in your future don't give a crap about what your mates think okay unless they're supportive unless they leave you alone and let you revise uh, and they talk about the subject and that they care about how well you do don't give a crap if they're trying to text you and you've already said no leave me alone I'll be revising on Wednesday night and they're texting you rubbish or ringing you up or asking if you're gonna come out and have a play no don't give a crap about what they think so many people when they're older oh uh, I could have done better at school but no, I was hanging around with me mates you know um no don't give a monkeys about them they probably won't be your mates in a couple of years anyway uh, and lastly you know people say you can do whatever you want to do you can be whatever you want to be and that is true but uh, a dream without a plan is just wishful thinking yeah I want to be a nurse I want to be uh, an electrician yeah great you can but you're gonna have to work okay you need a plan I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this and if the plan comes together then you should get there if you put in the time and if you put in the effort uh, a dream without a plan is just wishful thinking